everybody in this video I'm going to be walking you through how to use Microsoft Equation Editor um, really that's the key of what I'm doing here we're teaching some math some statistics like mean median mode range standard deviation uh, this worksheet could be printed off and we could do it by hand and it would be very simple but at some point in time if they're really going to be an engineer they're going to have to give a presentation or have to find a way to get a digital version of an equation into a document. So Microsoft Equation Editor is one method of doing it. It's pretty slick and I try to introduce it to my students here in Lesson 3.5. Um, so this worksheet I've taken uh, the values here. They, they have 12 data points. The first thing they ask you to do if you're doing it by hand is to rewrite them from least to greatest. So I did that. You'll notice the spacing. It was really easy to do the spacing just by using the tab button in between each of these decimals. So if I don't use the tab button, you see kids that turn in stuff that looks like this and it's just so crowded together. It's hard to tell if that's, you know, is that 4.84 or, um, or is that value 4.84.9? What, what's going on here? So I, I highly recommend that you use the tab button in order to space things out. You'll also notice that I just use the center. Uh, it's center justified, but whatever on that. Um, once you have them rewritten in order, then it's a matter of calculating the mean. And I think kids can calculate the mean of this. I, they all know how to do it from their middle school math classes. They're going to add all the values up and they're going to divide by 12 because that's how many values we have. But that's not the point here. What I want to do is teach them equation editor. Now there's a bunch of different ways to get to equation editor. The long way is to go click on insert and then come over here to equation. And I'll start typing an equation in here. I did notice today, I just learned, there is an ink equation tool, which is pretty cool. You can actually write it in and it turns it into text. Or we have all sorts of menus over here for things like, say, adding subscripts, which we'll do in this. Adding fractions, which we'll do in this. We'll even use the accent to get a repeating decimal at the end. You also have drop-down menu with all kinds of symbols that are available over here. You'll notice that if I click on the double drop down that it does allow me to change between say basic math symbols and Greek letters. So in this case we're going to use the capital letter sigma right here and the lower lowercase mu which is right here. Now I just showed you where everything was located in the table up here but what I'm going to do for the rest of the video is I'm going to walk you through keyboard shortcuts that help you do exactly the same thing but quicker. I use equation editor so often as an engineering and physics and math teacher that I'm always looking for faster ways. So here's your first one, alt equals, alt equals. If you type that in in Microsoft Word on the Windows version, I'm, a, I'm working on a PC right now, okay? That will insert an equation. I don't like the placement of that equation. So before I go any further, I'm just gonna get out of the equation. So I'm gonna arrow left and I'm gonna hit the backspace button. Nope, didn't do that. Let's see here. Oh, it's center justified. Let's go here and left justify. There we go. Okay, I just want to get it next to the mean. Now, the Greek letter mu is what I was looking for. This doesn't do anything. There are two different types of slashes. If I type a forward slash like this, this is the one that's next to the shift button. If I hit space afterward, it's going to set up a fraction. That's pretty convenient because I will have to add things up. So I'm going to backspace and hit the arrow over here and hit equals and type that in. So now I have a fraction set up because I know I'm going to add stuff up and divide by 12. But what I want over here is the symbol for mean, which is mu. The easiest way to get Greek letters in a lot of our mathematical symbols is to simply type the backslash. Now this is the one that's located above the inner sign, the inner button on your keyboard. It's next to the curly braces, not the forward slash. This is different. These two are different symbols. We want the backslash. If I type backslash and then I type out the word mu and then I hit space, it turns it into the mu symbol for me. That's pretty convenient. I can do the same thing for sigma, which is part of the mean formula. And by the way, I, don't, I know I don't have the formula sheet up. The, the formula sheet for PLTW has this, so you're, I'm just typing it out from memory from there. Now notice if I type in sigma, I hit space. I uh, see that's a lowercase s. That's a lowercase sigma, which I use for standard deviation later. But here, I want you to notice if I type sigma with a capital S, it does insert the sigma notation. Next, I need x with a subscript i. Easiest way to do that, honestly, is just to use the script tool up here. There are keyboard shortcuts. It's just a little bit more complicated for this. Once I set up the placeholders though, I can type in X and I can type in I. 
I arrow down, I type in N, and now I have my formula written out with all the Greek letters and symbols for calculating the mean. At that point in time, I can type another equals sign, and I'll have my kids actually fill this out with the values. So these values add up to 60.8. There are 12 of them. And if I divide that out, that equals 5, whoops, equals 5.06, and the 6 is repeating. So what I can do is I can highlight the 6. That's what I want to have the repeating symbol above. I'm going to come up to Accent. I'm going to put the bar over the top, and now I have 5.06 repeating as my answer. As far as rounding goes, what I tell my students is I kind of follow the rule from the presentation, which says you're going to always give one more decimal than what your data set has. This has one decimal point, so I'm going to give two decimal points. That means I would round this to 5.07 and call that my answer. Now, I would highly suggest if you're doing this, you have the kids go through and highlight, turn the text red. I mean, you can even say, you know, and I also want you, your, your work is red and your answer is highlighted. That's an easy way for the information to stick out to you because when you're grading 50 of these at a time, you don't want to have to go dig around. So that's an introduction to the equation editor. I'll create another video in a minute that actually walks you through the rest of this assignment where you're calculating the standard deviation. But by and large, I expect my kids, now that I show them this and we walk through it, they can do formulas for mean, median, mode, range. They can do all of those on their own because they understand those from the middle school math, the mathematical concept. Hopefully this video makes sense. There's a lot to take in. Feel free to pause and rewind and watch how I do things over and over again.